Let's do this. Thing. Cool. Episode 52, Ryan O'Bear. We're here. First episode of 2024. My man, thank you for coming through. Thank you for braving the blizzard. <laughs> yeah, dude. Thank you for having me. The blizzard, the blizzard threw a wrench into some stuff, but we it are did. here and we are doing it. Dude, global warming's fake as hell, dude. Dude, I was <laughs> yeah, I'm I was I was talking mad shit about global warming. <laughs> not that in the bad way. I was like, everybody's like, it's not snowing. Like, um, I'm like, it's 60 degrees in December, guys. We're fucked. Like, why are you worried about snow? Let's worry about some other Dude, stuff. I'm so on the opposite end of that, where I'm, I hate, like, I like, I like living in Connecticut and I don't like the cold. Yeah. So to me, it's like perfect. If we can just oh, add 10 degrees onto Connecticut the 100%. whole year, it's like mission accomplished. I hate being cold. Like, I, it makes no sense. I was born in January. <laughs> Um, I grew up playing hockey. I'm in New England. I should love cold. Dude, makes, were you born like here? Yeah, 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 yeah. But hate being cold. So like, yeah, ideally 60 degrees in December, I get to wear a t-shirt. It's sick. But then like big picture, it's like, oh, we're going to die. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> like, why am I putting money into my retirement fund? Definitely. Let's just not worry about that anymore. Yep. But yeah, now Mother Nature said, oh, yeah, don't worry. I got it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Just know. This is the premier global warming podcast. Yes. This is, uh, that's my forte. That's global what I know all about. Real. Uh, I want to go back to the start. So you were here episode something or other with Dan. I should have looked up the number. 24. 24. I think. My man. Uh, so 24. So a while ago, six months ago, give or take. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I realized one thing I, I like to start doing is figure out, like, where does this, like, journey start? Where does the music journey start for you? Yeah. You mentioned hockey there. Is hockey, like, step one or do drums come in step one? Like, what is your first thing as, like, a six-year-old that you attach to? Hockey, hockey is step one through, like, five. Okay. So, like, as a uh, young adolescent, I started playing hockey when they built the Northford ice rink. Like they came to like our school with like a learn to skate flyer. Like the rink wasn't even done. Like they were just like, Hey, we're going to be promoting this and stuff. And I basically brought it home to my parents. I was like, I want to do this. Hell so yeah. they brought me, like got me fitted in gear, like in a tent outside the rink. They were like fitting all the kids for learn to skate. And then I played hockey and that was it. I didn't play music until hockey ended. Like, so I played hockey all the way up through into high school, which is when I realized like, oh, I suck at hockey, like in comparison to everybody else. But like, I still thought in my brain, like I was an athlete, like mm -hmm. jock kid this persona. This is my life you're describing. hundred yep. percent. So I did that barely. Like I made the high school team like junior and senior year. I didn't make it freshman, sophomore year. I'm pretty sure still to this day, I only made the team junior year out of pity because I kept coming <laughs> back because I didn't play. Like I was like yeah. barely dressing, barely playing. And this is just the hanging out. Nice thing. You need the right 20 guys, not the best 20 guys. Yeah, you'd think. And I was not one of the right 20 guys, obviously. <laughs> Fair enough. But um, yeah, and, but in my brain, like I was so committed to like, I love hockey, love hockey that I was just still doing it. And mm -hmm. like looking back on it, I'm like, definitely should have quit. Like should not have been on the team like at all. Not even from ability thing, just like wasting my time thing. Like I could have been focused on other things. Like, cause once senior year came, music started to come in. Um, I learned drums, not learned. I was exposed to drumming through uh, my cousin, Dave, shout out Dave. You're not watching this, but <laughs> Um, he, <laughs> if all goes well, he will end up. I'm going to send it to him just so he can watch it and be like, it, it'll take five minutes here in the first five minutes. Um, that'll be clip number two. <laughs> clip number two. Boom. Dave. Dave. Um, my cousin Dave, he's actually younger than he drew up and he grew up, uh, drumming like for real, like marching band, like hurricanes, like, like, um, yeah, like the competition band. So he had like his drum set and we'd go over for Christmas Eve and stuff and I would just dick around on it, like, because it was fun. Um, and this coincides. I was really into Avenged Sevenfold, which I'm not really embarrassed to say. Like, at least back, I kind of <laughs> am now. Not really. But back in the day when Waking the Fall and, like, City yep. of Evil were happening, strictly, like, solely the rev, like, made me want to do music. I yep. was like, oh, this guy's the coolest guy yeah. on the planet. I need to be that. So... My cousin had the drum set. He wound up getting a new one. It was just like, why don't you just take my old one and i was like okay perfect literally took it and was just self-taught just started like learning how to hit stuff and like line things up learn by ear and stuff i have no clue how to read music not at least for drums like i understand quarter notes six i didn't understand notation and everything mm -hmm. but like if i was trying to sight read yeah i would have to learn anything by ear but yeah i got a drum set Started making noise in my basement. Started figuring out Avenged Sevenfold songs like very poorly. That's a huge place to start. Oh, 
huge. That's like the giant. <laughs> Hang on. Before we dive in, I forgot to mention up top that uh, Chain Twist has a show coming up February 10th in Wallingford. So if you live in Connecticut, yes. make plans February 10th. Go see Chain Twist. Basically they a, a hometown show. Like would love to see people. I think Liminal is shooting a music video. Yep. So yep. that is the plan. Come do some crazy shit and be in a music video. And then um, my oh. Oh, sorry to cut you no, off. No, it's there. basically it. Yeah, like come through. We have we're gonna have new merch. Um, possibly playing a new song. It's huge. Um, if we can get that all wrapped up and <laughs> like good. Yeah. So I'm confident. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, if you've seen us before, the three times we played, come through because it might not be the same show. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah. Fire. Stoked for that. So yeah, February tenth, Wallingford. Go see Chain Twist. Go Absolutely. see Liminal. Go see the homies. Uh, and for me. Uh, I guess music videos and also just that uh, the show is still small enough that like one like, two likes goes a long way. Like big a lot way. of these episodes get 10 likes total. So if you add one more to that, that's huge. That's a big number. So please, yeah, likes, comments, all those go far. And I hate asking for them, but it's probably worth doing up top. Uh, so anywho, chain twists, like the video, book a music video. Cool. Let's get back in. So yeah. Avenged Sevenfold to me is, yeah, the worst place to start learning drums. Like, oh, that's 100%. Like a, <laughs> that is running before you can walk. That's a oh, crazy place. It's to why I have in. so many bad habits because okay. I've never taken any like drum lesson like formally with somebody. So I've just developed like the worst Okay. Like habits of like playing drums. Like I play, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a bad habit, but I play drumming open-handed because that's how my brain works. So like when you go to like hi-hat, yes. most people play hi-hat with yep. their right and crossed. I play hi-hat with my left. I, I do everything like open. I never mm -hmm. like really cross over. So I don't know if that's from not knowing what I'm doing or just like how my brain works, but that's how I've always drummed. As a one month expert drummer here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some YouTube video that, yeah, explained that. And it's like, yeah, some people just prefer this way and their brain works that way. Yeah, yeah. Have you then adjusted your kit to that? Or are you still playing no. like a kind of a normal? Completely normal, normal kit. I just play hat here. So it's like this mm -hmm. snare. Yeah. And then everything else is pretty much the same. And I've just learned through it and on that. Definitely like in the beginning stages when you don't know what you're doing. Like I've had like the weird like mega kit setups where like my ride symbol is at like <laughs> 90 degrees for yep. no reason, but you only have like two symbols. So it looks stupid. Yep. Like I've done all of it yeah. where like you eventually fall into like the normal. That's learning. Yeah. yeah like, oh yeah, just make it look normal. And was drums like the first venture? I think you also play guitar and have some other I, comfort in instruments. I played saxophone okay. through middle school until high school when I was like, no, music's for nerds. Like yep. band is for nerds. Yep. I'm a job. Like I'm, <laughs> nah, I should have just stayed in band. <laughs> but I played saxophone. Saxophone was my first uh, exposure to music completely. Okay. And then high school, I didn't do anything. And then I picked drums back up and then started a band with, uh, my friend Ralph and Bobby from, from Dreamwave. Yes, yes. Um, shout out for the tyrant. Uh, so we did that, and then I wanted to start writing songs. So yeah. Ralph actually gave me a guitar. Essentially, he's like, "Here's just like a guitar that I first like started learning. I just whatever." So I just started again picking it up and just this sounds like this. This sounds like this. Learning how to just do it by ear. Like still out, have yeah. no clue how to actually play guitar, but like I know chords and know how to like riff a little bit. Enough, but yeah. yeah, I know enough to get around and write songs and get the point across. But hell yeah, it's basically it. Just finding things, getting them put in front of me, and be like, all right, well, we do this now. That's basically my life as well. That yeah, I play soccer my whole life, and then towards the end of high school, it's like this isn't going to go forever. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. You're like, oh boy, big identity crisis incoming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, the I tried a lot of stuff. I ended up going to college, and then in college is when the identity crisis really hits. Of like. This isn't this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. I I'm doing well here. This is going well, but like I'm not happy. This is just not Absolutely. not not my thing. Yeah. So I went and I tried a bunch of things, and a camera was one of those things. And of course, that's the one that stuck. Sticks. Um, yeah. And it it worked out. But yeah, there's a an interesting transition. I feel like I still am an athlete in the way that I approach the camera stuff. I feel like yeah. I still like treat a music video like game day and i still treat right, my like yeah. monday through friday as like my practice day yeah like, that mentality is really tough to kick but yeah. like i feel the same way i know you were talking to dan the first time here mm -hmm. it's like everything's just like athlete competitive where it's like yeah you want to treat everything like it's like a big deal but at the same time i feel like as i've grown up i've cared just like less yeah and less about stuff to where it's like you know what I, we're just gonna go with it i'm and, still like hyper competitive and yeah. i've had to like as a kid, it was like, I will compete with you at anything, like right. tic-tac-toe, like mm -hmm. whatever, hopscotch, like yeah. soccer, football, like all the best, big stuff, but even the little stuff. And if it's academic, it's like, I want to do my test better than you. I want to do it faster than you. I want right. to hand it in first. Like everything was always a competition. And That's I've had how to like work I that out. I definitely was like that as a kid, but now as an adult, I am like that 
um, selectively and it's only to be a dick. <laughs> like if I, yeah. I don't care, but if I see that you do care mm-hmm. and I feel like just being a jerk that day, I'm be like, all right, well, let's, <laughs> let's go for it. Yep. Then. And I'm just going to make you mad about it. I think I've done well to turn it inwards where I quickly learned that like, I can't compete with other artists. Like it's, we no, both yeah, you definitely that. can't. Both no. me and them are both losers in that yeah. process. <laughs> but if we're playing wiffle ball in like Tron's backyard, then I'm going to shit talk. And see it's gonna that I'm totally happy to sit. Out. I think, I, yeah, I literally sat in the playground <laughs> and just like watched it. Like I had fun just talking shit for that. Dude. But, yeah. Like, I, in the context of camera stuff, like I still have that thing of like, can I do it faster? Can I do it better? Like I, yeah. I've just taken all that competition and put it in, which probably is also yeah. an anxiety thing to stress That's, in its own yeah, right. Yeah, true. But I think, uh, yeah, that was something I had to learn early on of like, yeah, I can't compete against other photos. I can't compete against other numbers because right. we're all on such unique paths that it's not like soccer where there's some, uh, like an un- actual, like obtainable goal at yeah. the end where you are yeah. the best. Yeah, yeah. I think in the business that we are in, the way you described it is a perfect way to put it where you cannot be competitive towards other people. Cause one, you're going to look like a dick. Yes. People are going to outcast you for being that. Yep. And two, having goals, I feel like is good. But at the same time, you never actually achieve goals Yeah. because by the time you've achieved this goal, you've developed your skill set to where you now have like six more goals that are above the goal. Mm you already set. So you're just constantly chasing and chasing and chasing. Yep. So to have these inward competitions with yourself where it's like, oh, I did this video. I have another one lined up. I'm going to do this one better. Mm-hmm. Where you're constantly just trying to one-up yourself. Yeah. I think that's the way to look at it. But then like at the same time, you have to find the balance of like what's obtainable yeah. and what is going to just drive you nuts. Yep. And I think it does drive me nuts. And uh, one little slogan that I was talking about maybe last week or two weeks ago Um was this idea that like I, I was at a music video and I was like just stressing the hell out of it. Uh, and I have this like folder that I carry and always has like my treatment in it or whatever. And on like the, the bottom, like third of the folder or whatever, that little flap that goes over the yeah, papers, yeah, yeah. I wrote like, you're going to make something good. How can you make it better? Right. And it was this really freeing idea of like, oh, I don't need to make the best music video. Like just trust that if it's going bad, that I'll correct, that I'll make a change and I'll see that like, oh, this doesn't work. This yeah. I, I thought this was going to be the way we do it. We got here. And this ain't it. Yeah. And like, I'll trust that I can do that. And then my job is to make it better. And somehow that's been a much more freeing thing of like, oh, I'm not trying to make the Mona Lisa. I'm just trying to do whatever I'm doing and figure out how to make it 1% better. 100%. It doesn't have to be the best. It just has to be your best. Yeah. And of course, our best is also so subjective where it's, yeah, right. it's art. It's not a. Yeah. Uh, everybody's gonna, you can think it's your best, but everybody's going to think it's shit anyway. Yep. Like <laughs> it, there's always going to be someone who thinks this yeah. is the greatest thing ever. And there's someone who's going to be like, why did you even bother with this? Yes. Which so. is so hard for me as an athlete of like, if I score a hundred goals, like it's objectively yeah. good. Yeah. And there's not really anything in art that quite equates. I guess mm-hmm. record sales. I guess record sales, but even still, like, you can sell like Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. What we were talking about, like Taylor Swift sells hella records yes. objectively successful artists and there's yeah. people who are still gonna be like yeah well Taylor Swift sucks though yeah I think it's like okay like opinionly opinionly is not a word um That's close yeah whatever <laughs> subjectively like yeah you can have an opinion of like oh that is not for me but it's really hard and I try to do that too where it's like I look at mainstream music or like music that is not necessarily for me and separate it between like oh this is good music it's just not for me mm-hmm. so like yeah in our business like objectively you can be good and there's still going to be people who are like it's not good though yes yeah i always tell the story of my my first playthrough uh it's a guitar playthrough and we do it on the beach we do all these cool things yeah all the stuff that i thought was so stoked on at the time and we get one comment on the whole thing and the comment was that the guitars weren't plugged in and to me, it's, it's like, like yeah, no shit. We're yeah, on the beach, we, you fucking idiot. We were on a beach. We we're on a cliff. We we're in a park. Like, of Thanks. course, we don't have cabs and amps. Yeah. Like, obviously, we don't. Thank you. But it's exactly to that point. Like, yeah, no matter what you do, there's gonna be someone who thinks it stinks. It's someone who thinks it rocks. And yeah. I've turned the corner there, where it's like, to me now, it's like, if I do something in the comment is that the guitar isn't plugged in, like, great, I did my job. Like, if if you, I'm commenting <laughs> back, dude. I'm gonna be like, yeah, no shit. Thanks for the comment, though. Like, I'm literally just feeling because all of the comments are it just yeah. feels the algorithm anyway. Like, yep. I love getting hate comments. Like, I yep. post like my climbing videos. We can talk about it later. Mm-hmm. Not to divert already into that, but like, yeah. people would be like, oh yeah, blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, you got it. And like, I don't care. Yeah, being like sick. Yes, that's taking me a while to get to that place of like I don't care. I think I still do care. I think that's the weird you part. You have to is care like, a little bit. Yeah, as yeah. artists, like we do care, and there's yeah. something of like uh, in the context of the podcast. I think this is one that's always scared me of like uh, most of the support here has been positive, right? Because most of the people who are consuming this are people who are in my circle still. Right. If this thing continues to grow, eventually it'll reach people who are not in my circle, and someone's gonna watch this and everybody's be like, got an Yo, opinion. Peter sucks. Peter's yeah. so unlikable. He's so annoying. He yeah. talks too much. Whatever the thing. 
And like you always hear podcasters talk about like most of those will roll off my back and someone will say one thing that I'll be like, it's I didn't the most even minute, know that was a yeah, soft spot. Like, yeah, yes. exactly. People uh, will always find the insecurity that you didn't even know you had. And yep. You're like, oh man. No. And that's what I'm interested in. Where like with the camera, I think I've done a good job of like, yeah, I don't care if you don't like my art. I I, right. I get in this, the first place that's like the music industry we're in is not for most people. Like most people don't like chain twist, right? No. Like yeah. most people don't like metal. Most people don't want heavy stuff. Like right. the the majority of the country of the world is interested in more pop, more digestible stuff. So right. it's like 100%. it's easy for me then to put my camera work in that same category of like I'm already in a niche. I don't care if you don't like the niche or what, how I'm contributing to it because it's a niche. Mm-hmm. But on the personal level, it's like, oh, I'm not a niche. I'm a human being. Yeah, like I'm still a person. I'm making art. It's so it's yeah. nice, though, because like once you accept that, especially like in the context of change was where it's like my friends will be, oh, you're in a band. And I'll be like, yeah. Yes. And like it's almost like I'm I'm not ashamed because I will be like yeah I'm in a band it's called yep. Change Twist and then I'll literally be like I don't expect you to like it at all and then I'll be yep. like hey, do you have stuff on Spotify I'm like I do <laughs> probably not gonna like it yeah. and then they listen to it and they're like oh I get the it's oh that's Drake. nice <laughs> yeah. like good job and I'm like it's fine like I yep. you don't even have to pretend like you can really just say like it's not for for me at all like yep. And I get it. Like, I'm not offended. Like, I yep. totally know, like, it's not pop. It's not accessible, really, to yep. the majority of people. But my friends try. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, like an ass. Yeah, yeah, they're like, I'll listen to you because it's you. And I'm like, eh, yeah, it's fine. Good and even, then, even if they don't listen, yeah. even if they buy a shirt once in a yeah, while, exactly. there's other ways yeah. you can be there's supportive, ways, even yeah. if you don't like the art necessarily. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have the same thing when I, people ask me what I do for work. And when I'm telling you what I do for work, I'm so excited. I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah. But like when I'm in the airport or something, or like you're sitting, like those like so random conversations and they're like, oh, so you make videos. Who do you work with? And it's like, Everybody. it's not Justin Bieber. Like, it's yeah. not what you think it's going to be. Yeah, here. yeah. Um, so, I've, yeah, I learned to lean into, like, the college stuff. And I talk about Harvard because Harvard's a name that everyone can get behind. And I guess in this in this current two-week span, Harvard's a little more controversial than it's been in the past. Yeah. Um, but still, yeah, I try and, like, lean on that. And it's this weird thing of, like, my job is my identity. There's nothing I love more than what I do, and that's why I've kept doing it. But, like, yeah, it's this thing where it's, like, Oh, you're not gonna get it. Like I, that's I'm the thing. Not. It's just like I can tell you, and I can spend an hour explaining to you. But like your brain is so different from my brain, and we live in such different circles. That excuse me, like, oh, oh, okay. Yep. Most I do people- accounting though, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. You know, like. I've literally said I work in insurance before just because it's like an easier like just yeah. yeah this is what I do and then no one has any well that's like questions. the genre question where they're like oh like what style of music do you play yeah. and I'm just like it's like Metallica <laughs> like I don't know like same yep <laughs> it's like Metallica do you know Metallica it's yep. like that yeah I stay the Rolling Stones yeah. yeah I grew up as a good Charlie kid so I feel like that's like I can say Love good Charlie good Blink Charlie. 182 some 41 yeah. and like people most people have some loose understanding yeah, of what that is. Yeah, at least you know is. the anthem. Uh, like, yeah. cool. <laughs> and it's like, okay, it, imagine if that just kept going off off the rails. Yeah, it's just, even, it's just worse and worse from there. <laughs> yep. It's like my band was like, yeah, like in Slayer. But it's like if Slayer was like not Slayer. <laughs> yep. Like, oh, I'm like, yeah, exactly. Um, going back to start learning drums then. So you, you kind of leave hockey in high school and you get your drum set from... Dan, Dave, Jeff, Dave. 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 Dave, my boy Dave, King Dave. Dave. King Dave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, another story there um but anyway so you get your drum set from dave and you start learning are you learning from youtube or you're just sitting in your basement listen to event I'm sevenfold literally just listening like i already know the songs like inside and out because at the time like i was only li- i was so hyper fixed like i had banned mm-hmm. like in high school i was just trying to find like the heaviest shit i can listen yep. to which ironically enough looking back was not heavy the same at yep. all yeah 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 like Avenged Sevenfold, Slipknot. Yep. I was listening to like All That Remains. Yep. Um, early Bring Me the Horizon, like the OG, yep. like yep. Bring Me, Bring Me. Yep. Um, and yeah, I was like listening to that over and over, like the kid that walks through with the headphones on his iPod Classic. Oh yeah. Like, shout out iPod Classic. <laughs> um, so I already knew the songs inside and out. Yep. So I was just like already kind of air drumming, like I knew the parts. So then it was just like, how do I make my arms move? farther Mm -hmm. and like hit the right things and it just comes together and i'm playing along and making it through the songs because i know the parts and that not it's not well Um, it's not good that's an unbelievable thing to start with the only song i think i had pretty down was i can play backcountry pretty well okay but everything else is just like the beast and the harlot like double bass and like everything's so fast and it's just like i'm trying man i'm just like (laughs) running and you can't and 
in your head you think you sound great and then you know you, like your parents are upstairs like literally wanting to like that burn the house down. my next question yeah, yeah you mentioned saxophone and saxophone is, is like the wind instruments that are a nightmare to learn i played cello growing up in, er, in ele- elementary school that was the one i chose yeah and to me cello is like a a good one to learn because it's kind of like a deep and soothing noise and like i can play it in the basement even if you play the cello bad like it still it's sounds still there. musical yeah. And I think like a, a violin is like it's a little bit less and get a little squeaky and get a little yeah weird. a little higher in the register. And by the time you're into like the wind instruments, it's like you can really like f- if you play a trumpet bad, like you're causing you know. a problem for yeah, everyone you know. in the house. Mm-hmm. And drums are like the mecca of this, right? Of like if you play, there's no drum, volume on drums. No. <laughs> there is no volume knob. And when you're 16, all you want to do is hit it as hard as possible. I want so it, when you're, when you're was, 31, <laughs> you want to hit it as hard as possible. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I I I'm very very lucky to have the parents that I have who have dealt with whether it's learning how to play saxophone. Granted, I didn't practice saxophone. Mostly it was just at school yep. and a lot of it. Um, but picked up drums and they dealt with it. They dealt with like some like some of my bands like having practice in my basement. Like, so it's drums and like guitar and souls. bass. Like seriously, like Looking back on it, like, I don't understand why yeah. that happened. Because, like, my basement isn't soundproofed. It's, of like, course. one piece of plywood <laughs> and then, like, the house. Yep. Like, and it's, you can hear it from outside. Like, it's yeah. crystal clear you can hear it outside. Like, and I'm, like, just looking back, I'm, like, yeah, I'm very lucky to have parents that were willing to deal with that and help finance that at some points. Like, I want a new symbol for Christmas, and they're, like, here you go. And, and I'm like, yeah. I'm making your life progressively worse by doing this. Like, but yeah, my parents are, are the, are the best. It's, it's funny to buy you a symbol. It's like, it's, it costs $200 to me. And it also cost me the next six months of my hearing. Yeah, exactly. Like purchase. I'm making everything terrible. Yeah. Did, were they musical? Did you have a sibling who like paved the way for you? Like, no, literally just my cousin, Dave. Like I, my parents didn't play music. My parents really weren't even, I couldn't even, like, I feel like a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, my parents listened to, like, Green Day growing up. I couldn't even really tell you what my parents were like. <laughs> like, I remember growing up, it was a lot of, like, my dad likes country. Like, okay. Shania Twain. It was a lot of Shania Twain, a lot of, like, Alabama, like, and stuff like that. Like, when I was little, little. But, like, other than that, they just, like, throw on the radio and whatever's theirs. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I guess this is fine. Which is weird because... I don't know how I got all, like, where, like, my cousin Dave, like I said, like, but he didn't listen to, like, metal or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, what happened? Like, I think I heard, like, In the End by Linkin Park, which I feel like is the gateway for, like, most of us. Mm -hmm. I remember Hybrid Theory being the first CD that I, like, consciously, like, picked off the shelf and was like, this. Mm -hmm. Like, not my own money. I'm, like, eight. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, this. I want this. Mine and was the Eminem show, which is such a funny dude. So the Eminem there. show, I was not allowed to have the Eminem show because that <laughs> I had was the clean a, version. Yeah, yeah, I would have to like walk down the street to my friend's house who had the Eminem show, borrow the Eminem show, yep. then bring it back and yep. stuff before I knew how to burn CDs. So like, yeah, but yeah, I remember getting Hybrid Theory and then like wanting to play it in the car, and then my parents being like horrified when it came <laughs> on the radio in the car and be like, ah, yep, he's gonna be one of these kids. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I want to be one of these kids. But, yeah, like, I don't know. Everything just kind of happened. Like, I don't really have – even with hockey, like, my dad grew up playing soccer. Mm -hmm. Like, they went to, like, Whalers games. But, like, I – the Whalers were gone before, like, I really developed anything like Mm -hmm. that. So, like, that didn't really have much of a play to it. So, hockey kind of just happened naturally. Music kind of just happened naturally where this is just my personality now. <laughs> Were you, I feel like when I was in high school, I knew I was a black sheep by listening to Bring Me the Horizon and it made me happy to wear my Bring Me the Horizon shirt that I knew made me stand out, but somehow it was right. like a, a symbol of pride to like be with the jocks and with the athletes and be yeah. like, no, I'm not like you guys. I can play with you guys, but I'm not like you guys. Yeah. Did you have a similar like almost ego trip from being the black sheep there? Or were you like self-conscious about it? What was that like? In a way... Yes, I feel like in the moment, definitely yes. Looking back, I feel like people just didn't like me. Mm-hmm. Like and so, like in my brain, it was like, yeah, I'm an outcast. I don't listen. Like I had my friend group that like listened to the same stuff, but like sure. no one on the hockey team listened to this shit. Like yeah. no one. I feel kind of like a floater friend mm-hmm. for everything where I can sit at whatever table. But like looking back, I think it's just because I sat at whatever table and people just dealt with me, not because they actually wanted me there. Sure. Um, but. Yeah, like for 
<laughs> yeah, I a little more credit. No, no, no. I think I, I have the same thing. Of like, I I felt like a floater more. Of like, I could hang out with the yeah. To use the very general stereotype, I can hang out with the nerds, or the jocks. Yeah, the yeah. Kids. But I can only but hang like, out with them at school. Like, no one's inviting me to shit outside same. of school. But yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. just we're here. I'm gonna sit at your table. There's a yep. seat, and they're like, oh hey. Yeah. I'm just like, hey. there's one kid, and you know, at the table. So the rest yeah, of them exactly, kind of deal exactly. Yeah, yeah. But no, in terms of like ego, yeah, in a way, I was definitely like, oh, can I find heavier stuff to listen to and push myself away even more? Yep. Because, like, I'm not finding this spot here. Yeah. Like, how can I further just, like, alienate myself from it? If it's not going to be my thing, how can I make this my thing to the point where, like, it's only my thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was constantly just trying to Some find. Some exclusivity over it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, is that still in you? And I think for, for me it is. I think for me certainly part of what I like about my job is that it seems mathematically improbable. It seems like my job shouldn't exist. It shouldn't work. I shouldn't be able to make a living with a camera. And that is part of the fun to me of figuring out how to continue to make this thing work. Do you still have that with like chain twists? Is it still like a let me make a new metal thing because I want to be different than all the metal core and the hardcore kids? Or is it like a, yeah, is it much more? In a, maybe subconsciously in a way. I know, I mean, for me, Dan mostly brings all the music stuff and I just get mm. to say like yes or no, sure. which is nice because like in the past, it's been a lot of like me or Josh like bringing music to our bands. Mm. So like I get to take kind of a back seat, which is cool. Um, I feel like in a way it's there where it's like, I want to be different. Yeah, I wanna. I want our band to stand out, mm -hmm. and I feel like we kind of do. But I don't think it's in the same sense of like, oh, if I'm not going to be accepted in this, like I'm just going to do something different. I mm -hmm. think it's just genuinely like, oh, I like this music. Yeah. I think the older I get, it becomes more of like a self conscious ego thing, and more of just like I genuinely don't care, and I just want. Like I'm old enough where I just want to mm -hmm. do what's going to make me happy, and if it makes other people happy too, then cool 100%. or if i'm providing art or like whatever it is to people and they latch onto it too cool yep but i'm definitely not like the oh well if i can't play metalcore wrist then i'm just gonna make something so absurdly different that like you have to listen like i don't care like that at there's all. A, a weird balance there to me of like if uh there's a reason to write the heaviest breakdown and it's not because the coolest breakdown it's because if you can write something that elicits the reaction that will ramos is scream until the hellfire got then exactly. like your life can change and there's this weird thing free in video it's the same thing of like i could make the most abstract weird video and it's probably gonna miss but on the off chance it hits it's gonna hit it's hard gonna with work. somebody like yeah. yeah somebody's gonna be like oh that was cool i get it yeah and it's not worth making it just because i think it's weird and outlandish but it's like if i believe in it and it happens to become weird and outlandish then cool yeah. but yeah there is a fine line now that we're in the in the driver's seat of the creative creation process there or the the passenger seat I yeah guess, yeah you know how you described it um but yeah there is a weird thing of like you want to stand out but if you're only making it to stand out then you're also fucked in that process exactly as well. yeah it's that it's kind of the same way as kind of what we were talking about the last time me and Dan were here where it's like, if you're only making things to fit in mm -hmm. or be successful, you're kind of fucked. Like you, in yeah. the end, like you, especially as an adult, like I get it as like a teenager, if you're in a band, you're like, oh, we just want to be big and mm -hmm. like make what attack attack is making. Like the older you get, like you have to put effort into something you actually believe in. Yep. And if you're doing it for the polarity of like, oh, I just want to make something different because no one's doing it and you don't actually, mm -hmm. you're not invested in it or the opposite where like you're selling out or whatever it's called. Like to make money, like it becomes apparent. It doesn't hit. It's not going to yep. go the way you want it to go at all. I think I've also found a lot of comfort in the idea that like the the things that succeed are often like a mut a mixture of other stuff. And I think yeah. someone like Post Malone's a great example of like yeah. he took pop music and made it digestible to pop and to us, to the yeah. metal kids, to the rock kids, to the hardcore, right. the, mm -hmm. the indie kids. Like he he He's took everywhere. that and combined yeah. it. And Billie Eilish and of course Sleep Token, I think, is an interesting part of this conversation as well. Where in the the Drumio thing, we were just talking about the the yeah. offering from two. Offering, uh, he talked yeah. about how uh, his roots are in like uh, dance music, like UK mm -hmm. dance music. Uh, and that's an interesting one to me. It's like, yeah, as you listen to the record that's gone viral, it's changed their lives. Uh, I assume it changed their lives. I don't quite know exactly where they were before, but I assume that this was the one that popped and I saw made the stat everything different. It's like but, they, a year ago, they had 300,000 listeners and then dropped <laughs> like show cold in the summing and had over a million in like a month. And I'm like, pfft. There you go. It's pretty life changing. Um, but to me, it's like that that's where these things come from, where you can combine these influences. And for me, it's like I've always been a mutt of rap and metal, and I've enjoyed leaning into that more of like, yeah, I think there's things that rap does well and metal does well. And my job is to try and figure out how to link these two things together. And like the example I always go to is I think metal takes itself too seriously and rap doesn't take itself seriously enough. So yeah. in rap, there's the idea 100%. of like, let's shoot 10 music videos today. Let's go to the park and shoot one. And then we're going to cross the street to the parking lot. All and shoot shot, another hashtag one. shot on iPhone. <laughs> yep. Like everything is just, yeah. Yeah. And like the, 
the flip side there is the metal band who goes, we're going to sit on this for six months. We're going to plan out everything perfect and get it done. And it's like no one. And then in the end, no one cares because like, nothing happened. Right. And the yeah. rap person maybe could use a little more on the quality side, but the quantity side is valuable. Ultimately, the goal is to uh, uh, let people know you're doing it. And if yeah. you're planning for six months, no one knows you're doing it. No exactly. one knows about that process. And no one cares about your big things coming. Like yep. we're all guilty <laughs> of it. I, the amount of times I said, yo, the world is not ready <laughs> of course. for what my band is about to do. <laughs> of course. This is going to be the same three minute, 30 second breakdown song that you've heard before but yeah. i did it like yeah. yeah but yeah if you're not planning like then you gotta but the same way yeah rap can definitely take itself more seriously i don't know where i was going with this on the uh, water bowling no just um, the, in the you were starting to talk about how like the i don't know the different varieties of interests and how like we don't want to make stuff just to be the uh, outlier yeah, yeah, yeah and it's like there is yeah freedom and going oh i don't want to make stuff to be the outlier so what i should be doing is looking at me and going what is my unique recipe of 10 interests yeah. and how do i then curate that into one thing which i think we're doing with chain twist now uh, yeah, I where agree with that. it's like we have obviously a lot of metal influences but a lot of the newer stuff that we're going to be doing um there's a lot of electronic whether it be electronic dance but it's a lot of like sample based like hip hop style mm -hmm. dan's doing a lot more um like the low raspy, like talking like parts mm -hmm. where he's not really rapping, but it's not screaming mm -hmm. or singing. It's really just like speaking directly to people. Yep. Um, so we're doing a lot of these blending and weaving of like different That's things exciting. where, yeah, where we want to again, like be different, yep. but like it sounds cool. It's not just like for fun. It's just like, Oh, this is what the best we can do and what we want to do and the product of our efforts, I guess. Yeah. And we're just putting it out there and hoping that it resonates with somebody. And that's all you can do, right? Yeah. I saw um, uh, Skylar from Issues, the bass player from Issues, or I guess yeah. formerly, whatever. I don't know if it's current or former because I have a farewell show, so I guess yeah. it's former, I mean, but also current. Technically, you're current until whatever. those shows. But yeah. yeah. Um, he was talking about how, like, uh, I think he was doing like a, a Q&A on Twitter, and the question was something to the effect of, like, do you think you would have succeeded if you had different vocalists in the band? Like, do you think that those two vocalists were – the only reason that this thing worked and he kind of said something to the effect of like they were a piece of it we're all a piece of it but more so it's just lightning strikes and right exactly as we are now as he's now talking about working on a new project it's like i can't make lightning strike again like we're no. hoping lightning does but that was kind of a comforting thing of like someone who made it to look back and be like it's not that we wrote the best record it was a yeah. great record or a great couple of records but like there is some amount of luck that's in this 100 percent. that makes it easier for me then to go out and put out art where it's like my job is to put out art. My job is not to determine if it's good, if it's bad, if it's worth anything. Like my job is just to recognize that my perspective and my angle on this, my creations are unique. Yeah. And because there's a quote on the wall over there and some that I'm kind of paraphrasing loosely. And one piece of that is like, because there's only one of you in all time, your expression is unique. And that's been a really valuable thing for me of like, yeah, that's, that's my job is just to keep making stuff. And if lightning strikes great. And if yeah. it doesn't, then hopefully I can keep paying my bills at the very least. And we'll go from there. Exactly. And like, music especially like always comes in ways like like the four of us were kind of talking where it's like if a band like there's kind of different waves to it where like if a band like title fight like mm -hmm. or like balance like that whole era yeah. of like the sad boy like grungy type stuff sure love it big fan of it but like if that were to try to happen now it wouldn't work if like title fight started mm -hmm. today they would not get big yeah because it's not like the thing like bands are popping up and now it's like a sleep token it's like a bad omens where it's like how can we do this like lo-fi dark pop heavy thing that's what's kind of like going now so like if sleep token happened years ago like obviously they did happen years ago like nothing was happening until now yep. like it's all these like different things of where like skylar was saying like lightning has to strike yeah we, we you can you can say unfortunately like just put the hard work into it and it'll happen. Like keep working, keep working, keep pushing and it'll happen. And it will to some extent. But like in the end, bands that pop off do need a little bit of luck. Like mm -hmm. you're you're ignorant to say like you didn't get lucky at least a little bit. Yep. Like And it's true of any kind of success, right? I think yeah. Tom Brady has to get lucky to mm -hmm. be whatever, six round draft pick out of Michigan and like yeah. somehow he's and able Drew to Drew Bledsoe gets hurt. Like yeah. if Drew Bledsoe now gets hurt, like do we get Tom Brady? No, yeah. probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe we get them in a different form, but yeah, yeah exactly. There's a, a perfect timing. There's yeah, there's some kind there's of always some there. type of just like yeah. lightning in a bottle thing. Yep. It's like yep, this just falls into place, and there you go. Yeah, and uh, I 
I think I would be a fool to say that Tom Brady wouldn't have found success. Otherwise, he seems like a hard-headed and stubborn enough guy they would Maybe. have figured it out. But yeah, there has to be some some amount of luck, some amount of chance that has to go into it. And I guess that's where the the cliche like. Um, what is it? Success is hard work meeting opportunity or something like that. Yeah, something something like that. to that effect. Like, yeah. simulation. Right so. play. <laughs> Dude, last week with Justin Brown, I was talking about how Earth is a flat circle, and I don't really know what that or time is a flat circle. Sorry, and I don't know what uh, time is a flat circle really means, but I like the idea. And when you said we live in a simulation, it's a similar thing. Of like, I don't really know what it means, but I like it, and I'm going to keep have, using. We it. could have a whole podcast of literally me just like spewing off just like dumb like conspiracy stuff just because like yeah. i like to yep. say th- stupid things yeah so yeah we live in a simulation i'm the only person that actually exists everything else is a projection of my subconscious there you go hell yeah i um, feel really good about myself now <laughs> <laughs> so i'll get my tinfoil hats from upstairs so and make this we could have done the whole podcast tinfoil hats. <laughs> hell yeah dude uh um, yeah again back to the yeah, rogue real stuff there. real stuff real stuff uh as real as it gets dude um I've been learning drums recently, and so it's been a really fun adventure for me of like enriching how I understand music. And it's been you mentioned Event Sevenfold, and it's a uh, it was funny to me that you brought it up because I've enjoyed listening to them again, and I haven't listened to them in five ten years at this point. Yeah. But as I got into drums, it's like made it so exciting to go through my old like catalog of stuff I used to listen to, and I'm hearing stuff I've never heard before, and it's like enriched my ability to understand music. Uh, and I'm curious, like, do you now as you're learning guitar, like, is there a a part of you that's interested in stuff outside of drums to like further enrich what you are doing on drums. Like I don't, I don't think learning guitar makes you a better drummer, but I think it helps you understand song structure better or melody better in a way 100%. that then re like reinforces what you're doing on drums. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like I originally learned guitar and everything like to write songs. Mm-hmm. Like I have all these ideas in my head and it's like, okay, well how do I do it? I need to like figure all this out. Yeah. So learning different instruments, definitely helps in even like just writing drums where it's like oh i know enough to like listen to like a demo or whatever thing where there's guitar parts and i'm like which part needs drums here like Mm -hmm. which thing should i be helping whether it's like oh are we gonna have this like drum and bass locked in while the like guitar riffs or like do i want to hit this cymbal like in a way that's gonna accent what dan's yelling or like am I going to do this like contrast with Josh's guitar? So like learning kind of how everything is interweaving in a song and the structure, like definitely helps me um, write and know like what part of a song like calls for what kind of drums, Mm -hmm. whether the drums need to get fast or slow down, whether it needs to be no drums at all, Mm -hmm. like what everything, how it's going to be the best it needs to be. Definitely having like that, um, a little bit of experience and knowing how to play things definitely uh helps out with that for sure i think my my bigger value there has been that i feel like i'm removing an uh an obstacle for my creativity and this is always something that i feel like i come back to and my first experience with this was upgrading my computer and to me it's like i could have made every like now i've got a desktop that i've built and i've slowly been upgrading parts over the years and kind of yeah kept it as cutting edge as i can afford to keep it basically um and I really, it was one of the things like when I had my laptop, I had a MacBook for a while and that's, you know, kind of where everyone starts with video stuff. And uh, when I upgraded to my PC, it wasn't that my MacBook was like incapable of doing what I needed to do, but it was like, it was slow and it took more time. And to me, when I got to the PC, it was like, okay, now I am more able to just create without having to worry about the technical aspect of stuff. I can just, yeah, that's an obstacle for my creativity that's removed so I can get from my brain to the product quicker. And I think with drums, there's been a similar thing of like, I... I understand rhythm better. So my, I feel like my cuts and stuff are more timely. They're more on the beat instead of being off. Yeah. A little yeah, off. Yeah. Um, and also in terms of like just being on set and being able to communicate with you guys of like, this is what I'm seeing in my head, but I don't know how to speak to a drummer. I don't know the language. And now yeah. I'm slowly learning the language so that next time I can be like, Oh, I need this part in the crash. I need this part on the ride. I need whatever. I need this fill again. And all yeah. these like little things that I've just can't begin to talk about and i'm still probably can't really talk about but i'm slowly getting it's more there. competency yeah, yeah. yeah and i'm wondering yeah in, in drums i guess like what are the obstacles in your creativity i think for most drummers it's uh having a space to play and it sounds like you've been fortunate that you've had a basement that you can go well, make noise in yeah i mean definitely it's now definitely having a space to play because one my house is a dog now so i don't make noise i haven't had my drums in my house for probably like five years now, they've all Damn. been up in Massachusetts. So I only really get to play when we go practice. So it's really just trying gotcha. to, the big obstacle with a drum set is trying to find time, mm-hmm. place, 
all that thing. Yep. Um, which is why I got the e kit now. So the, that's on the way, so I can set Huge, up yeah. finally and like actually learn how to like play drums. Mm-hmm. Um, focus on trying to do like rudiments and stuff because I don't know how to do any of that. Gotcha. So in a way, when I talk to drummers too, and like or if I watch, it's funny. I'll watch like playthroughs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, my favorite fill is normally like a right left, like it's a paradiddle, and I'm like, I know what a paradiddle is, but like when they explain stuff, the way I like li- listen to it, I'm like, oh, he hits snare tom snare floor and now i'm like how do i do that with my hands so mm-hmm. like some the way of being self-taught like a uh, obstacle is kind of like not having the foundation of like drum language i guess in mm-hmm. a way where like i'm not like able to fall back on like paradiddles and all these different things where it's literally just like well if i have to make these noises happen yeah and how am i going to do that when there's definitely easy ways to do it and i just don't have it I've found a lot of comfort in the idea that there's only like six things I can hit. I guess I'm looking over trying to count yeah, how many yeah, things yeah. I can hit, but whatever, six, seven, eight, mm-hmm. whatever the number is. Whereas when I was learning guitar, it was like, it felt like this so unlimited many. possibility of like, I just didn't know where to start. And there's something about drums that's simple. And as you're describing, I'm realizing there's also the sense of like, oh, I could add a tom here. I could add another crash. I could add 100%. more cymbals here. Yeah. Is that an obstacle still as you're listening to like something like Avenged Sevenfold or I assume you've started yes. to try and learn like some of the sleep token stuff. And I know mm-hmm. he has splashes galore splashes going galore, on. Splashes galore. And I've been battling with myself. I'm like, am I going to be a splash guy? <laughs> like, am I going to get splashes? And like, I've talked about it with like the guys too. And I'm like, I'm thinking about getting splashes and they're like, you should. And I'm like, but like, do we need it? (laughs) Is Chan Twist a splash band? Like realistically, where would these be? Like, would it just be for show? Yeah, so it's yeah, a weird variable to me where it's like a guitarist, I guess sometimes go from six string to seven to eight strings, but like yeah. adding a string to me is very different than figuring out which splash and where you want it, like physically where you want to mm-hmm. put it to make it comfortable. And like, yeah, because I'm very muscle there. memoried yeah. to the point where like, if it's not in the exact same place, I'll miss like <laughs> the, the sure. Webster show, like the dream like show, because I was rushing to like set everything up. I put like my main crash, like just a little too far to the right and there were literally parts in the set where like i'm so dialed in i'm looking like <laughs> over here and i go to hit and it's just air nothing and i'm like <laughs> cool all right perfect Got so it. yeah like adding new things or like changing stuff up um is definitely a bit of an obstacle because like you get so dialed in on your stuff it's kind of yeah. like with like i'm assuming your cameras where it's like mm-hmm. you have all your settings and if someone accidentally like hits the light over and you're yep. like well we're done like yep. let's figure this back out and it just kind of has to reset you or the other version of that is like if i i use sony cameras so if i pick up like a canon camera it's yeah like, okay it's yeah. the same thing but it's right not. but just because the buttons are in a different place and the menus look a little different all of a sudden it's this nightmare of like mm-hmm. i don't know how to make a video I've anymore and it's nothing like, i do i know exactly how to make a video still and it's just yeah the interface that changed and that's right. kind of similar to yeah moving a symbol and having mm-hmm. it just It's like you still know how to play the song, but if I don't know where to push that button. Yeah, it's like you got to take a step back and be like, yeah, dang. Is there like a dream setup? Is there a if money wasn't a factor, would you add more toms, more symbols? Like, is there something that strikes you as like a a perfect answer to this problem? If money wasn't an option, I'd probably get like a couple little accessory symbols. Mm -hmm. Just like I'd probably get like two splashes, maybe like one little china like in the middle Mm -hmm. just to do like the little like flourishes like in the middle because they sound cool yeah like they sound cool and i'd maybe add like one other floor tom just so i can really just like hit the (laughs) double floor toms just like really hard and get like those like war drum things happening yep but i'm very minimalist the more stuff i have the more i have to think about Mm -hmm. and it's the more like trying to incorporate them for like justify having them because there's Mm -hmm. nothing worse than like not to be a hater but, like, there's nothing worse than the dude who rolls up to, like, the Tuesday night gig with his, like, full <laughs> rack and, like, the two bass drums. And I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, why are we doing this? Yep. Like, yep. so I try to keep it as um, minimal and there's a word that I can't think about. But, like, minimal and just, like, Essential. bare bones. Yeah. And just modest. Modest as there possible. Um, there we go, brain. <laughs> um, modest as possible because, one – it's more stuff you got to carry. Yep, loading. More stuff you got to set up. And more loading in break. as a drummer already yep. fucking sucks, dude. It's the worst thing like, in the world. Yeah. So more stuff you got to worry about playing because it's like, oh, if you don't have this, then like, if you're not playing it, then why even bother having it? Mm-hmm. So like, dream world, no money. I'd maybe add a couple extra stuff, but like, I'm pretty happy with the way my my kid is now. Interesting. I got what I need. 
I use all of it and it sounds good and I'm just, I'm good to go. Yeah. I just got the head that two uses from snare uh, for the snare drum. Okay. So my snare sounds like that now and I'm happy. Like, Hell yeah. Cause his snare is incredible. But yeah. That's yeah. all a uh, step up. Yeah. I'm learning my e-kit still. So the idea of a physical drum and the, all the different kinds of wood you can get, I'm sure there's yeah. a bunch of different kinds of heads and patterns and styles. It's that the are same all in my brain, gone. in my brain, maybe other drummers think that but at least in my brain, a snare drum is like the equivalent of like a guitarist tone. Mm -hmm. Like if you hear a guitar and you're like, oh, that's so-and-so's tone. Like you hear a snare drum and I'm like, oh, cool. Like that's that drummer Which guy. is so weird to me that like you have 10 things around you and somehow this one is the one that boils. Like guitar tone makes sense to me where it's like- Snare sticks out to me the most. Like, yeah. And I think that's true for most people, yeah. but it's a, it's a strange one to me. Yeah. Not necessarily like individual status where I can tell like what drummers, but I'm definitely like, oh, I like this yep. way more yeah than this or like i hear it more through everything is the snare how is uh climbing then making you a better drummer i think that's the other piece of the drums that's been interesting for me it's like i think it makes me better at videos and of course they're two totally separate things but just in the effort of learning something and going and uh, appreciating what it is to be a beginner again right like I, we were talking about our camera and to me it's like i feel like i can use my camera with my eyes closed i can tell you where all the buttons are and mm -hmm. i can put the camera in your hands and tell you okay push this button scroll down to the six one click yeah, this yeah, one yeah. Like i can do all of that perfectly and that uh, it's something I forget what it's like to be a beginner, right? It's been so long since I picked up a camera and looked at it. It's like, what is this? <laughs> this is yeah. a four. How do I hold this? Like, what do I what touch? What am I doing? What yeah. am I doing? And by having that with the drums, it's given me like an appreciation of like, oh, I have done something. I have learned something. I've come a long way from when I, when my camera was equivalent to where my drums are now. Or I sit down at the kit and it's like, it's not that I don't know how to play. I don't even know what to play. I don't know where to start. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's really hard. Like, like when we pick up, I feel like stuff like we do where it's videos or drums or music mm -hmm. in general, it's like, the world is so big. Yep. It's like, okay, I can do anything. Yep. Which is very daunting in the sense that you can do anything, yeah. which means you really can do nothing <laughs> yep. because you have no clue yes. where this is supposed to happen. And so experiencing that again, I feel like has really allowed me to, I guess, be proud of myself in the video world and appreciate that I have done something. And it also just feels like a good exercise of like, yeah, learning stuff and I'm enriching my rhythm and enriching how to talk to people and just, yeah, practicing how to learn, practicing how to grow, practicing being uncomfortable so that when I'm at my video desk being uncomfortable, it's a little bit more familiar, I guess. Right. Uh, does climbing then make you a better drummer? I'm curious, like, how these two things overlap where I'm, I'm sure they must in some capacity, but I'm I mean, my forearms are really strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, a huge I overlap, yeah. Uh, I never look at them as overlapping. To me, they're kind of like two separate okay. worlds for me where I have – in my climbing, which is kind of more of like just my physical state, mm -hmm. it's a more fun way for me to exercise and yep. like be in control of my body, which I guess can translate into me like independence wise, like mm -hmm. limb independence and like doing stuff with arms, legs. But yeah, no, climbing is just more of like a peace of mind, like more I go to just like unplug from everything. I don't have to worry about music. I don't have to worry mm -hmm. about work, job. I yeah. strictly just have to go climb. The best way, um, the old owner of the gym that I climb at, my home gym, put it was climbing is the perfect escape from something because it takes 100% of your physical, mental, and emotional attention mm -hmm. at once. Like physically, you have to be dialed in because you're quite literally physically climbing. Mm -hmm. Mentally, you have to be aware of what you're doing and the route you're doing and emotionally because there's times where you cannot do it and you need to be able to keep your emotions in check and continue to work at it or you're going to get frustrated and not be able to do it and if you yep. don't do one of these things then you're going to get hurt yep so it's the perfect way to kind of like unplug yep. from everything and just go focus on something mm -hmm. with all of your attention and That's, not have anything else to worry about i've heard martial arts described similarly and i yeah. haven't quite thought that climbing and martial arts yeah have a lot of that overlap in common of yeah it is a, a physical problem solving so yeah. it involves your brain your body yeah it's very um, fulfilling i too. like the idea with or when i was thinking about this question earlier like with the climbing and how it impacts drumming i feel like climbing must encourage you or uh reinforce what it is to take risks and like help you take risks where you're yeah literally risking reaching for this will i get it mm -hmm. and i'm sure in the process of learning it's you fall a bunch of times and eventually the movement clicks and you make it to the next yeah leap. yeah and i feel like that would help when you're in the studio going like oh should i try this and it's like you've already tried and failed so many times in this climbing context that now trying at a drum kit is a much more comfortable experience does, like, does that feel true at all yeah in a way yeah definitely i'm definitely not scared to take risks like mm -hmm at all um 
especially if someone brings something that like I didn't think about. I'm like, yeah, let's let's try it yeah. out. Like we're very big on that, even with guitar and bass and everything, where it's like, this sounds cool, but what if? We'll throw yeah. everything at the wall. So yeah, in a way, I def- definitely think like climbing has reinforced that. I feel like I might have already had a little bit of that, but it's definitely pushed it a little farther where um, going through with climbing, I I don't really think about it mm-hmm. as even risks anymore. I'm just like, oh, let's just try it. Like, I don't even think about it as a risk. Which it's to me is huge. Like, yeah, let's just go. Yeah, I think I can be risk averse at times of like, I uh, when I'm doing a music video, right? Like, I recognize that for me, it's another project. But for you guys, it's the one thing you're doing for these six months, maybe it's a year. And right. in that sense, it's like, I don't want to, it's taking risks feels disrespectful to that weight. Like if, if I know this is valuable to you, it feels disrespectful for me to like take a chance just for the sake of taking a chance, right? If I'm taking a chance, it better be motivated and intentional and and careful and yeah, thought out. And I think that, yeah, somehow in this process of being a beginner again, it's a good chance of like, Oh no, let's reevaluate what risks are valuable and yeah, Yeah. practice being bad at stuff so that when I have this idea, it's like, okay, I'm more comfortable seeing this through and yeah, taking a shot at it and see if it works out at all. Definitely. I mean, I can't speak for the other bands you work, but like for us, like we take risks. Yeah. Like we want to do something that like pushes the boundary. Like we want to, we bring you in as like a fifth member of the group because we value your opinion. And if you think something like throw it out there, like it might not happen, but like yeah. we will listen to you and we want to know, like we yeah. brought you in, especially if like we've done videos ourselves. So like we can do all these things. We're bringing you in because you have a skill set and a mind that we mm-hmm. do not have. So if you think of something and you can't have like an explanation behind it and you're like, I'm seeing this, let's try this. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's see what, it, where it goes. I, I appreciate that. And I think I hear a similar sentiment from a lot of bands, but I think the flip side there is like, uh, when you're at a, an office job and a new manager comes in, like, I think when a new person comes in, what you're thinking as an office normally is like, Oh, we want them to shake things up. And the minute they come in and shake things up, Everybody some people are going to be like, fuck, dude, yeah. bring me back to the old guy. Like, yeah, why is yeah, he yeah. messing with my stuff? Why is he moving the copy machine or whatever mm-hmm. dumb thing in an office can change? And I think with a band, it's a similar thing. Like, everyone's saying, like, please take risks. And to me, it's like, yes, but, like, I don't want to disrespect the culture that you guys have built. And there's the a line. And the yeah, there's a yeah. line for sure. Um, I feel like it's definitely more um, viewed as a risk if you're going to work with someone for, like, the first time or someone you don't have a previous, like, mm-hmm. relationship with where you're yeah. like, meeting people for the first time and you don't know how they operate and you don't know their personalities or like their yeah. sound or anything. And people are just like, Hey Peter, we heard about you through so-and-so through so-and-so mm-hmm. like fourth hand. Yep. We want to make a video. And then you're definitely going to be a little more reserved because mm-hmm. it's like, this is my first impression with these people. Yep. But the more you work with people, yep. I feel like that risk goes away. Like have hearted. Now you've done X amount of videos. Like you can be like, mm-hmm. what if we flew on a dragon? <laughs> Hear me out. Like, and they'll be like, yeah, you know, uh, you know what? Maybe. Like I can Jay see would it. ask for two dragons. Jay would literally be like, "We all need our individual dragons." Yeah. Um, great idea, so sick. Um, <laughs> write it down. You write it down, write it down right now. Out of the podcast and send it to Jay. <laughs> but Jay, we got the next video, buddy. Don't Shay, worry. Don't worry, man. I got you. <laughs> but yeah, like the more it doesn't become risks anymore, and I yeah. feel like that way, like not really um, climbing associated, but with Jay and Twist, like. I've been friends with Dan for X amount of years in a band with him now for however long change was has been like two years, mm-hmm. but I've been doing music with Josh and Joe for probably like eight years. So yeah. like we we're actually funnily enough, just talking about this together last night, but we all know each other so well mm-hmm. and we know each other's personalities and we know how far like verbatim we were saying this, yeah. like how far we can push each other before we're like, okay, like, you mean it my bad okay yep. um and that's how it works like so like the more yep. people work with you and the more you know people you can be like no we can do this let's go let's go let's go yep. and then you know when to take the foot off the gas and like yep. okay let's just do what you want that's always been the the one of the hardest parts of my job and it's part of my job that i love where kind of going back a little bit in high school we we're talking about how we always felt like floaters mm-hmm. and i feel like to some degree i think i still have that identity where i for a month, I'm the fifth member of this band. And the next month, I'm the fifth member of that band. And it's right. like this constant thing where I'm always trying to find that line. And it's a, a something I'm constantly doing. It's constantly walking into a scene and going, I don't really I'm know you guys. Now. You don't really know You're me. You're just a foreign exchange student but, for, for a month. <laughs> Literally, that's a great, yeah, a great yeah. analogy. Is that, yeah, I'm a foreign exchange student in a new country every month. And it's like, uh, I love that. To me, it's a really fun thing where I think... Uh, 
the one thing about a band that's never appealed to me is like, I don't want to have to make one sound for 10 years. Like I right. really love about my job that like every month I kind of, I'm in a new style of band. It's something mm -hmm. I'm in a new genre of band and everyone like, I guess half hearted and chain twist are in similar genres, but like very different things, very different ideas that I'm going to put into each category. And it's really fun for me to like sign up to the half hearted camp and be like, okay, I am Sean Dalkey this month. What yeah. is Sean Dalkey? Like, what how do I thinking? make this? Yeah. yeah. And then the change was one comes in. It's like, fuck all that. Throw all that out. Like, yeah. cool. Love no you, Sean. Dragons. But like for this moment, no dragons. Yes. Uh, and now it's like, okay, what is change was? How does change was work? And it's a really fun challenge, but it is a weird one of like, yeah, I, uh, it's always this balance of like, you're bringing me in to take risks. But if I come in and just shake the whole thing up from the ground yeah. up, then yeah, I've gotten nowhere. And it's always a balance. And to your point about pushing people, it's a similar thing of like, uh, when I'm have my discovery calls, my introductory calls, and I, you know, get the band to say, what does this song mean to you? And to me, it's like, I want to mine that as deep as I can. But there's a part of that where you're going to go like, isn't this his job? <laughs> Why yeah, is he asking no, me all these questions? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, I know uh, we kind of had that like similar experience mm -hmm. where we're like, okay, we want to bring Peter and we want to have like Peter think of it because we just didn't want to like stress about an idea <laughs> yeah and then you're like so what's your ideas and we're like yep. fuck uh <laughs> yep. so but like there's a there's a balance like yeah. as a band you definitely should have a vision mm -hmm. at bare minimum like a vision so yeah. that way you're not just presented something completely new but then you're also bringing in a, pr a director or a producer yep. who has a vision because you mm -hmm. don't either don't want to or can't or whatever the means are. It's just like you want to have somebody who kind of like takes the reins a bit yep. and kind of directs and produces. Yeah. So there's the fine balance between is the person we're bringing in accomplishing the goal and doing the band a good service or are we just bringing in someone like who doesn't get it? And it's, it's mm -hmm. the whole thing of like finding the mesh between yeah. we have to be a band and do our jobs, but then someone has to do their jobs and that just has to work. Yep. Yeah. To me, the initial like process of kind of mining your brains, like even if you don't have an idea for a video, like you sat in the song with the studio for yeah. six months. It's like, so what did you got to see the something? About? Yeah. yeah. Like when you close your eyes, you got to see, a color you gotta see something there is. and like, even if you don't know it's there it's there yeah like, it's there yeah. you just haven't thought about it yeah. like you you have a song and especially as a band you've been sitting with us long enough to record it write it mm -hmm. now we're gonna do a video for it yeah. it's gotta mean something to you dude. I hope so. like yeah it doesn't, hope so. we're, I'm we're not yeah. yeah like we're yeah. not we shouldn't be doing this at all yeah like there's you listen to a song so much and you've invested so much of your effort that you've got to have like when i listen to this i at least feel angry sad happy like something yep, yeah yeah so like now it's cool that's your idea now how do we expand on it yes yeah, yeah. it's exactly that to me it's yeah let me let me take all that word vomit and i'll ingest it and do my best to put that in a package that's marketable that's exciting that's interesting and yeah mm -hmm. do my best to boil that down but yeah it has to start with like get me up to speed you guys are the experts here like i'm not right. going to come in and tell you what this song means you've been listening to the song for six I, yeah, months i, I don't know what this song the first means. time <laughs> yeah like... i haven't written all the lyrics and yeah. read through them all and mm -hmm. tried to figure out like oh he used this word intentionally yeah. this word is from a, a note his ex wrote him 10 yeah. years ago like there's a reason that this word was chosen yeah like what parts are the big parts mm -hmm. like what do you like it's valuable for you to come in as a like or whoever it may be, like mm. a director to come in and first listen, like, oh, upon first listen, I think this is a key moment in the song. Yeah. Super cool. Cause like you are looking at it through a complete, completely different lens yeah. where you're like, oh, sonically, I can see like this big moment happening. And then it's as a band, like you said, like, oh, but actually this like hidden lyric that's like buried in there, like, is supposed yep. to mean a lot. And it's like, okay, well, how can we do these things or like what yep. is happening? So yeah, it's always fun to expose your your art to people who haven't because you've been invested in it so long yeah. that you get these uh elicit like reactions mm -hmm. like and you're like oh i actually didn't even think of that yep. which is why i feel like you want to have like an outside it's like yeah. we like going to sean where it's like yeah sean do you have any ideas we've been <laughs> with this demo for eight months like we you got, got a anything? chorus and a bridge but yeah. we need uh, one bar yeah. to get us from a to b yeah there, luckily yeah. like we normally go to Sean. We're very efficient. We go to Sean with full stuff. We're ready oh, yeah. to go. We're just like, we're in and out. Let's record it. But there's times where it's like, can we make this better? Mm -hmm. Like, is there anything we're missing? Like, and yep. it's having someone who hasn't been attached to the song for a year. Yep. It's like, hmm, yeah, let's add like the synth. Let's mm -hmm. add this. It's always fun to just have extra little 
tidbits of stuff because you're not so involved. Yep. Yeah. Um, chatting about the creative process then, what's going on with Chain Twist? I know we got, yeah, we got the show coming up that we mentioned. Uh, yeah. I don't want to make you say anything that we're not ready to announce publicly. I know bands I mean, intentionally want to roll out <laughs> carefully. No, uh, I don't yeah. think we care for the most part. <laughs> I mean, we don't have anything set in stone for me to announce anyway. It's all just like in the air. This is what we want to accomplish. Sure. But we have a song done. Um, we have an uh, idea for a video that we're going to hopefully do ourselves. Um, because that's how we roll. Hell yeah. Um, we're looking to hopefully like ballpark, like hopefully March, like have it out. Maybe that might be stretching it like a lot, but spring, we'll put spring <laughs> as an umbrella. Spring, new song, new video. Exciting. We've got some time booked with Sean. I think, I think we booked it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so removed. I like I I make sure I know what's going on, but like specific things for the most part, I forget. Yep. I'm pretty sure we have time book with Sean again early spring to go in and record an EP. I think it's gonna be yeah. you know, four-ish songs, um, and then have that out hopefully you know like summer e at Hell least yeah. the single for it. Yep. Uh, summerish, and then have the whole thing out fall and maybe like a, another standalone single that's not attached to the EP late in the year so Hell we've yeah. got a we've got a very very loose blueprint of a roadmap for some stuff um obviously we want to play shows in between all that because i feel like we've been so we've been really focused on getting a lot of music out mm -hmm. and haven't been playing live we want to get in front of people so we definitely want to play as many shows as we can and interweaved with all this but in terms of what we're doing and what we're in control of new song ep possibly another new song after that Hell so yeah. that's where we're at hell yeah. yeah any other goals for you on the 2024 i think i'm yeah kind of looking ahead and to me it's like as i look into the new year i think for me it's like keep doing what i'm doing and keep leaning into things that are fun and exciting to me i think in the context of taking risks and yeah we're kind of touching about like blending our own unique styles and to me it's exactly that it's finding out what makes me happy and how i can make these things combine and spend more time doing those things is there anything to you that stands out as like as a moving forward either with Chain Twist or with Ryan personally? Like what is something we're working on moving forward? What's going to make the the new year better than the last one for you? With Chain Twist specifically, yeah, it's just making sure we do all these new songs like mm -hmm. a, as good a service as we can because they're, I mean, it's my band. So they're <laughs> great. They're amazing yeah. songs. But like they really are like I've never been happier in a, a band like setting where I'm like – listening to my own band this mm -hmm. much i'm like yeah we we kind of we're kind of sick and yeah. i don't feel bad about it like <laughs> whatever i listen to my own band music fuck off um for me like specifically i've always found it hard like as an individual to like quantify goals and like yeah. what is better like so rather than set all these like benchmarks i try to do it with climbing is it gonna happen probably not but like if I set goals, then maybe I'll be motivated to reach them. Yeah. But a lot of the times it's just like, oh, it's a new year. Let's just try to figure it out a little more. Like, mm -hmm. like you said, like really lean into stuff that like makes me as an individual like happy, things I enjoy doing. So I'm not wasting my time putting all my effort into a lot of things that de necessarily deserve it. Yeah. Um, wanting to just enjoy some stuff a little more and not wake up wishing i was still asleep for the most part <laughs> absolutely yeah. um and really just kind of the older you got to the more you want to just take advantage of some stuff and make sure like you're spending time with your friends you're doing stuff that yeah. is meaningful and just leaving as much as you can i'm making it sound like i'm eight four like i'm gonna die but um no just making sure like you're like taking advantage of everything that's in front of you and you're leaving behind like as much as you can and yeah with art whether it's art or just like experiences with people like you want people to be able to like talk about you you know mm -hmm. and stuff you want you want all these you want to take advantage yep. of what it is that was very loosely morbid but whatever wise yeah i'm honest. not gonna die anytime <laughs> soon <laughs> i uh there's a quote upstairs that i have and it's uh, i think ralph waldo emerson is the guy's name i think he's an old poet i'm not totally yeah. sure exactly mm -hmm. uh, transcendentalism existentialism sounds like you know more about it than i do but there's a, yeah. a quote that's on my family fridge that i now have upstairs uh and it's some version of like to know that even one life is breathed easier because you have lived is to have succeeded. Exactly. Um, and yeah. I like that idea of, yeah. yeah, to your point of community and social. It's like, yeah, yeah. make yourself I just want to be happy. I just like, want, I don't want, I want people to be happy to be around me. Yep. And that in turn makes me happier. Like yeah. if I, I'm not really concerned about me mm -hmm. as an individual, I'm concerned about everybody else. Yeah. I put every single person way before I do. So yeah. if I can do something that's going to make your life even a little better, 
like make you smile once like mm-hmm. today cool that works for me like that's all i'm yep. really worried about is just making sure like people around me and that i care for are, are taken care of and happy and yep. doing what they want to do and if i can play into successes if i can yep. play into even just experiences whatever it may be that's all i'm really worried about yep. if i can make everybody else happy in 2024 then that's a good goal for me yeah yeah i think i'm wired the same way to please everyone else i've joked before that i'm like a golden retriever where it's like i'm, I'm yeah literally push. like yeah like i'll run into traffic for you if you want <laughs> like, is yeah. that what you want yeah cool yep. Um, but I think I, I think I would do wise to be more selfish with some of my energy. I've been, I had a friend tell me, that's like, you got to stop doing that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah. Like I'm aware of it, which is probably worse that I'm like very aware that I'm not. Yeah. Awareness much, is step one, I think. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, okay, like let's maybe dial it back and worry about yeah. me a little bit. Yeah. But. I think there's some, some sense of like in trying to please everyone else. I forgot to please myself. hundred percent. A, a nice process of like, uh, drums are one or yeah. golf has been the other one that I've yeah. enjoyed getting into. And it's like, I don't. Uh, yeah, it has no value to anyone in my life. Like yeah. it's really useless to everyone yeah. else. But that's been a really freeing thing of like, yeah, go be bad at golf. Go yeah. out there and fucking ruin the whole course. Yeah, my you got to be bad at like, something. Like, yeah, yeah you're yeah. not good at everything. Yeah, and but I think I've worked so hard to be good at everything. And I think part of my job is like I'm, I make videos, but part of that is a communication thing. Part of it is like Photoshop. Part of it's like Illustrator. Part of it's Premiere. Part of it's Lightroom. Like there's so many. Uh, lighting yeah, like different there's facets so many of it different things i'm trying to master at all times and it's a i think a noble pursuit and one that i'm happy to continue to do but it's like i can't i can't do this all the time there has to be some point there's where i can just like shut off at 6 p.m and be like just i'm be just peter just go figure out yeah. what peter is and i don't even know if i know who peter is i think i have part no of the, idea who ryan is i think it's been part of the podcast and part of the challenge here for me is like sitting down and being like what the fuck do I want to talk about? Well, yeah. who, do, who do I want to talk to? Yeah. What, do, what do I like? What yeah. makes me happy and interested? Dude, I uh, hate that. People are like, so what do you do? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, what are your hobbies? And I'm yeah. like, I just go where people tell me. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's kind of it. Like, yeah. I play in a band. I like yeah. that, I yeah. guess. Yep. Like, I have the same thing. And so, yeah, I've been really working hard to figure out, like, what, yeah, what are the yeah. things? Or, like, I, I don't like watching movies, but I've been trying to. Have, like, I've been trying to get into movies. Yep. I have been trying to get into horror movies because okay. I feel like that just fits me. Okay. And a lot of the times I will watch a horror movie and I don't get it. Yep. Or like I don't think it's good and I'll go on to look at reviews and be like, I can't be the only one. And I'd be like, this is the greatest horror movie ever made. And I'm like, do I just not get it? Or yeah. like this wasn't even scary. Like, huh? Yep. So like I'm trying to get better at movies. I'm trying to get better at shows. A lot of the time I just don't have time or like the attention span. Same. Because – that's what our brains are now. Well, see, um, that's what I tell myself. But then I think attention span is a muscle. And I think having time, it's like, I, I looked at my screen time on my phone. And I know I was on Twitter for more than a movie length a lot of days. Like, yeah, I, I had time for the movie. It's just that I chose to put it into TikTok or Twitter yeah. or whatever, mindless scrolling. And yeah, I think if attention is a is a muscle that I can grow, that yeah, I'm doing myself a disservice true. by not investing it into longer things of like, yeah, I, I don't believe Twitter's the road to happiness. I don't believe TikTok. Like, there's no, not an amount of scrolling that's going to make my day better. No, it's the road to the exact opposite. Uh, yes. It's uh, the road to comparison uh, and goals that don't exist yeah. and self-esteem. Uh, not that a movie is going to make me happy, but at least it's like It's a, not this. It's a well-crafted thing. And for me, it's like as a camera thing, if I nothing say, else. Yeah, as a video person, you get... Yeah. ideas and inspiration from and that. And even if I don't love what I'm watching, even if I'm not impressed by what I'm consuming, or I've joked, uh, I heard a comedian describe that they don't like watching comedy because it feels like they've seen the Matrix. And now when someone's on stage, they're just seeing the ones and zeros pop up. And that's yeah. how art, like visual arts feel to me sometimes of like watching a movie almost feels like I'm watching a play where I'm not just aware of the stage, but I'm aware of the fact that they're All humans and I'm aware that there's 10 people behind the camera and someone's holding a mic and that they had to cut and reset and reframe and go back to their marks. And this is the 19th right, take yeah. and there was a take in that was cut out or like uh, my favorite thing is like as two people are talking, we always film like over the shoulder. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when you realize when they're cutting to a reaction shot, it's because they had to dub over whatever I was saying. Right. So when I'm talking to Ryan and they cut to the shot that is now looking at Ryan's face, it's the if audio you look at my me. jaw, yeah. it like doesn't align with the thing anymore. Mm-hmm. And that to me is one that like no one else picks up on, but I pick up on because I'm right. aware of this and it takes me out of the movie. So I have all these excuses of why I don't like watching movies. But the flip side is like, if there is anyone who's an expert with a camera, they're probably in Hollywood. It's probably not going to be in a metal music video. Right, like whatever yeah, the, yeah. The Michael Jordan is of my industry is probably not in my world. Probably they're in that world because that's where the salaries of Michael Jordan ends up. Exactly. Um, so it's, yeah, been like, a, even if I don't love it, even if it's not the perfect thing, like there has to be value in here that I can derive that is more beneficial to me than the doom right. scrolling that we like yeah, to talk about 100%. and get involved in. Yeah, I've definitely been trying to be better at that, whether it's taking in movies or mm-hmm. taking in TV shows, just like stuff 
I have the joke of like, I'll add it to the list, which I feel like everybody has. Cause <laughs> yeah. people are like, Oh, have you seen this? Be like, no, you got to watch and be like, yeah, I'll put it on my list. I just, the list isn't it. real. Yeah. <laughs> the list isn't real. I don't have a list. If I've ever told you, like, I'm going to put it on the list. I'll get to it. I'm sorry, but I'm not. And I've been really trying to be better about that. I have a physical list now. Okay. Do I use it? No, but I do put it on a list. It's a start. Okay. Yeah. So what's on the list? What's the next one you're going to watch? Commit to something right now oh, or else. Fuck, hang on. Give me one. What is, yeah, as we we're looking ahead, I watched the Boondock Saints the other night for the first time. Never seen that. I watched uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, where I realized I'm too dumb That's on for the like list. multiverse. It's like a multiverse movie. It's and not. I'm it's a not stupid. superhero. Yeah, I'm multiverse. too stupid for all of those. I don't. Uh, my brain can't begin to comprehend all the different timelines and parallel universes. Oh, where's like, my I, list? I, everything. I, I know it. everything all at once is on there. Oh wait, I have a letterbox. That's where my list is. There we go. Uh, I'll keep filling time until until we get to my list. I got no worries. Uh, ma, ma, I can ma, talk to myself ma, ma, forever, ma. Bubby. Oh, um, where's my list? Oh no, um, the list. Cocaine Bears on the list. Oh, That's not yeah. a real movie. Um, I need to watch. I need to watch the Batman with Robert Pattinson because mm-hmm. I haven't watched it. A lot of it's a lot of movies that like you would expect. I've seen same and I oh, have yeah. it because oh, I yeah. never watched movies. I never cared. Like literally same. growing up, I'm like, my world is hockey and this is yep. all I care about. That and then it was soccer. my world is yep. music and this is all I care about. So yep. I, I don't, I'm a very like shallow <laughs> person in terms of like depth, yep. like not yeah. a lot here, not a lot to unpack. <laughs> so yeah, I've got like the Batman, everything all at once. I got to watch Donnie Darko. Never saw that. Shocker. Uh, us. From Jordan Peele. I saw the other two. Didn't see us. Um, Gone Girl. I don't know. I got random stuff on here. Give me one. What's the next one you're going to watch? Commit to one right now. Um, (laughs) Hold you accountable to this. I'll watch us. I'm going to watch us tonight. There you go. Internet. There we go. Tonight, which is 48 hours. This will be, I think, in day or two. So yeah. by the time you've seen this, you fucking better have watched I'll it. I'll watch it. I'll post <laughs> a thing else. about it. Yeah. I'll be pissed I'll at you least post it. a picture of me on Netflix watching it, even if I watch it or not. It'll be there. And you'll read the synopsis of it so you can at least tell yeah, me I'll, that. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll spark notes. I like the one scene. Yeah, I like the one scene where there's one of like, the same person. <laughs> yep. There we go. Done. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's Hell a podcast yeah. for us, boys. Um. Anything you want to plug before you get out of here? So Chain Twist has a show, Wallingford, February 10th, show opening up, for Liminal. Punch somebody. Come through. New merch. Uh, punch someone who's probably not me, though. Punch like someone punch who Peter. wants to be punched. Yeah. Give you a shirt. Oh. <laughs> Fuck, I don't even have a shirt. <laughs> Bro, we, we, I, I remember, remember the you just punch me in shirts. I remember up. real quick, real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, no worries at all. Real quick, when we were Fear the Tyrant, me and Bobby's first band, mm-hmm. we literally had our friend Kyle like wear a gorilla suit. To like the Webster and like our frontman would literally like point and call and be like, yo, when this kicks in, first person to punch the gorilla in a face gets a fucking like t-shirt or whatever. And I don't even think we had t-shirts <laughs> at the time, but we were just so like trying to like get people into it and stuff. He's like, punch yep. the fucking gorilla. And you just watch her friend get absolutely decked by some random <laughs> dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, there's clip number three for us, yeah, boys. Man, we there it is. There it is. Uh, where can people find you online? What should they look out for? Where do they follow Chain Twist? Where do they follow Mr. Ryan? Uh, What's going on in the world? Chain Twist, I'm pretty sure, is just Chain Twist underscore on Twitter, X, whatever the fuck. Um, Instagram. That's basically all we use Twitter and Instagram. Um, me personally, I'm on Instagram. It's just Ryan underscore Obear. Um, if you care about climbing, I do climbing videos. Which turns out that like millions of people have watched these climbing videos. They're all fucking dumb. They like, are, but they're that, stupid videos. It all counts. I don't get it. Yeah, like it I'm all I'm happy at work, yeah. but like I don't understand. Um, yeah, that's Rhino Climbs underscore on Instagram and TikTok. If you care, if you don't, I get it. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Chain Twist, come to the show on the tenth. New merch, and it just makes me happy. Please. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Mission accomplished, dude. That's completely it. Follow Ryan, follow me. I never plug my own stuff on here. Follow but Peter. If you don't Peter know, Peter JT Media. Sounds good to me. Something. It'll come up. Type me in. Yeah. yeah it'll come it's all, up. It's all somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I exist in the universe somehow. It'll show but up. But I guess, sorry, I lied. I don't exist in the universe. You exist in the universe, and I'm oh, a yeah. figment of your universe. <laughs> so, with that said, yes, episode 52 is back. The Grand Canyon's artificially made. <laughs>